Alrighty, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Gotcha, didn't I? The shirt is just so bright. I had, I just had to find some way to make the entrance like not the normal because it's so damn bright. And if you are watching on YouTube, you see how bright it is. So I hope you can get through this whole episode. It's so damn bright. But um, either way, let's, let's hop into what we're talking about today. And this is something that most people... They take, they take a bunch of different ways and they go a lot of different routes and there's a lot of different like avenues to, to kind of go when this happens, right? So the topic of what we're talking about is if you're not seeing the progress you want to see, what do you do then? And there's so many things that can happen when you aren't seeing the progress you want to see. I, I can't really get into them all, but I'll try to cover what I believe is your kind of roadmap, kind of your checklist, kind of your plan of action to follow when you do kind of, you know, start, start giving effort to a diet, giving effort to an exercise routine, giving effort to something and you're not seeing the, the return on your investment, right? You're not seeing what you want to see from that effort. And a couple of things just right off the bat, first and foremost, if you've only been doing it for a week, two weeks, four weeks, this, this video has no, it doesn't apply to you because you're not actually, you haven't actually put enough effort in, right? If you haven't gone at least, at the very least, 30 days with, with sticking to something and trying something, then you should not be watching this video at all whatsoever. So that's the first thing, first and foremost. The second thing is, if you have been going for 30 days and, and you have been trying to do these things, but you're just finding it's very unsustainable, like you're restricting calories too much, you're trying to go way too intense in your workouts, the very first thing is just scale back what you're doing. Make the things more sustainable. Make them more attainable. You're, you're able to hit them easier. I don't, if you're watching this only eating 900 calories or you're watching this trying to work out for two hours, seven days a week, again, that right there is probably why you're not seeing the progress you want to because somewhere along the line, something's falling through the crack and, and you're not able to stick with it consistently. So that's the second thing I want to say. So those two things being said, let's dive into what we're going to talk about today. So like I said, kind of like a checklist, roadmap, plan of action that you can follow. The first thing, first and foremost, is please, please don't be afraid. Don't feel like you're too good or your pride is too big or your ego is too big to seek out help, right? And this is something a lot of people struggle with, especially if you, if you are a prideful person, if you take pride in doing things on your own, if you're very independent, I myself have had this issue plenty, plenty, plenty of times, so I can speak from a lot of experience. Don't let your, your ego and your pride get in the way of you seeking out help to the questions you have or, or the problems you need solved. Whether that is working with a coach, whether it is joining a community, whether it is asking your older brother who's you know, more in shape, whatever it is, don't let your ego get over the fact that you need help and you need answers. It's, it's okay to need help. It's okay to want to seek out answers. It's okay to want some guidance or just to help with a plan. That All of that is okay. There's nothing saying that you can't go get help. There's, no, there's nothing saying you can't go learn from somebody else for three months, six months, nine months. Like Everything I've learned has been from somebody else. Somebody else's research, somebody else's words, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else but I've taken it and, and kind of spun it in my own way, right? So it's like, there's nothing wrong with, with seeking out help first and foremost. And I need a lot of you to realize that because the flip side of this too is if you're in a place where you're trying very hard, you're, 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 you're putting in a lot of effort, things aren't going the way you want to, you're so frustrated and so mad and so upset that you don't want to seek out help. You don't want to hear anyone else's opinion. You don't want to hear anyone else's conflicting beliefs to what you have right now that's not working for you. you. You don't want to hear any of that. If that's where you are, you need to be real with yourself and, and stop being so defensive and stop being so stuck in your own ways that you don't want to hear someone else's opinion. You don't want to try something else. You don't want to do these things because you're so stuck in your way and, and, and you are frustrated. Your heels are dug in the ground. You're upset and I totally get it. Because you're not seeing progress, you're upset, you're frustrated, it's totally understandable, but you have to realize that whatever you are doing is clearly not working. And that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, seeking out help, seeking out some kind of guidance from somebody who knows more, has experienced more, just, just has a, a better knowledge base than you, 
that's not a bad thing. You, you, everybody learns from something else. Like I just told you, everything I've learned has been from reading articles, watching videos, watching seminars, go, like doing my own research, doing my own experiments. All, all these things I've learned mainly from other people. It's not like I've invented anything new. So that I, I want to make very, very clear first and foremost. Please don't let your ego, your emotions, your, your not wanting to try different things, your, your don't let anything stop you from seeking out help because the more help you're able to seek out, the more information you're, you're going to have. The more information you can have, the better you can use it to your life. Like if you go out and, and reach out to me for help and, you, and I tell you X, Y, and Z, but you've already tried Z and you want to try X and Y, perfect. Like you're still getting something. You still, you, you, you might take it and put your own spin on it. You might do this instead of that. Whatever the case may be, you're still getting closer to your goal. And, and my thing is like, would you rather not seek out help? Would you rather not be in a place where you can continue to further where you want to be? Or would you, would you rather seek out help? Would you rather get closer? Whether it is through me telling you or someone else telling you or reading somewhere, whatever the case may be, would you rather do that or stay where you are right now? And if you want to stay where you are right now, that's fine. But if, if that's the case, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So the first thing I can't say enough, don't be afraid. Don't let your ego stop you from seeking out help and being open to new suggestions, being open to people telling you different things and trying different things and doing X, Y, and Z. Be open to those things because like I just said, if what you're doing right now isn't working, then what you're doing right now isn't working. And that's totally fine. But it's just that can lead you to try something different to get a different result, right? That's first and foremost. The next thing I want to cover is assuming you are following a plan, whether it is calorie counting, keto, whether you're doing three times a week exercise, whatever the case may be, assuming you are following a plan, the next thing I have to say is if you're not following that plan with at least 90% consistency, you have no business being upset with your progress. You have no business being frustrated with your progress. You have no business wondering why you are not seeing progress because that right there is why. And normally I say from 80 to 90%, if you're following that consistently, you will see results. But the thing is, if you're coming, watching this video, you're probably already frustrated. You think you're doing 100% consistency. You think you're doing everything right, X, Y, and Z, whatever the case may be. So that's why I put 90%. If you're not following your plan, at least 90% consistently, then you have no business looking for different results or, or, or being upset with your progress or lack thereof because you're not actually following it consistently. If you're not actually doing the things you say your plan labels out, then you're not actually following the plan at all. So then how are you upset with the progress? If, if your plan is to do calorie counting, for example, and you're, calorie, you're, you're counting probably 85% of your foods during the day, you're missing some drinks here and there, you're missing some snacks here and there, you're not weighing your food out properly on a food scale, well, well then how are you upset with your progress if you're not weighing your food out? How are you upset with your progress if you're not tracking every single bite? every single snack, every single sip of, a, of an orange juice. If you're not doing the things that the plan labels out for you, you have no business being upset with the lack of progress you may not be making, right? So that's one big thing and whatever the plan is, if your plan is to work out three times a week and you're maybe working out one or two times a week, you can't be upset with the progress because it's not the plan, it's you're not following the plan. And, and I talked earlier about if your plan is not sustainable, that's one thing. If you're trying to do 900 calories, if you're trying to do you know, seven days a week, two hours of exercise, that's one thing. But if, you're, if you have a plan that is sustainable, you're just not following it, you, you, you can't be upset with the lack of progress because it's not the plan, it's the lack that you're sticking to the plan consistency, right? So you're not actually doing the plan. So you, how can you expect to see results if you're not following that plan? And I have to hammer this home because I see a lot of people who, Week after week, month after month, they think they're doing everything they possibly can. You, you think you're sticking to 1,200 calories. You think you're eating this much protein. You think you're exercising the hardest you can. When in reality, here, here's what happens a lot of the time. What's on your mind is, let's just use fat loss for example. What's on your mind is fat loss is on your mind 24-7. And it's been, on your, it's been on your mind 24-7 for the past six months, year, five years, 10 years. You might have been trying to lose this weight for the past 10 years. And in your head, you're like, everything I've ever done is fat loss, fat loss, fat loss. And that's all you think about. 
But because that's all you think about, you're forgetting about, oh yeah, on this Saturday night, I probably had you know, two handfuls of chips when I went out to dinner that probably led to about 500 calories I didn't track. Oh yeah, well I probably didn't track those drinks as accurately as I could have during this time I was away on travel. Oh, I didn't weigh my food when I said I was going to and I just kind of guesstimated. And you think you're doing everything right, but in reality, you're, you're just not. And that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That gives, you, that gives you power that puts you in control of your progress because you can track your calories meticulously every single day for 30 days. You can do these things that the plan labels out for you that's going to make you see progress. And I want to get that out because most people think they're doing, they, they think they're doing 90% consistency. But in reality, when they really break it down, when they really think about it, they really be honest with themselves. And, and that takes guts, that takes heart, that, that takes a lot of effort, being brutally honest with yourself, like not being defensive, not being so, so shut down that you're not open to say, okay, I could be doing some things differently. And, and if you can get to that point where you say, yes, I'm doing these things very well, but I could be doing these three, two, two three things better, I, I just know that if you get to that point and you do those two or three things better, those two or three things are what's holding you back, what's not letting you see progress, what's not letting you be consistent to your plan, even though you think you are. Your, your, your brain is centered around fat loss and you think you're doing everything you possibly can, but in reality, there, some things are falling through the crack, right? So that's what I want to say on that and it's very, very, very important. I can't emphasize that enough. So that would be the second thing. Notice these first two things have nothing to do with changing plans. They have nothing to do with making adjustments, nothing to do with any of that. It's just, are you actually on the right plan, on the right path? Are you following the right plan? Are you being consistent? It, those things come before any adjustments. And people think that coaches make a ton of adjustments. I, I, honestly, I don't make that many adjustments because if I can just get you to somehow follow that plan correctly, you're gonna see results. It's just all about how can you do mainly this right here how can you do that over and over and over again? And, and that will make you see results. So notice that first two most important things don't have anything to do with making adjustments. The third thing we will go into talking about making adjustments to your plan. If you, if you are following your plan, if you are at least 90% consistent, if you've sought out help, if you've done all these things, and again, be honest with yourself. But if you have, we can talk about what changes need to be made. So for fat loss, for example, if we're talking about nutrition, you can go to, cal so it says big to small. You can go calories first. If you're eating 1,700 calories, you can drop to 1,500 calories. That, that could be one adjustment right there. If you, going big to small, stay on the same path. So we went calories, you could drop calories. You could increase protein. If you're doing you know, 100 grams of protein a day, you could increase to 125 or 130 grams a day. If you weigh 130 and you're doing 100 grams, you could be, you, you could be doing 130 grams of protein. So you could be eating your body weight in protein, just for an example, right? So big to small, calories, protein, and then come the carbs and fats. Like notice how the calories were first, the protein was second, and then carbs and fats come after that. Because it, it truly shouldn't matter how many carbs and fats you're eating if the first two are in check. So if, protein, if calories and protein are in check, fats and carbs can kind of fall where they want. Now, I will say this, like, especially if you're a woman, you want to make sure those fats are at a good optimal range, like at least 0.3 to 0.5 grams per body weight, right? So you want to have that in check, but as long as that's in check, which most people tend to be, it, it really doesn't matter that much. And then like after the carbs and fats, so you have calories, protein, carbs, fats, then you can go to like meal timing, like what time of the day are you having your meals? Then you can go to like, okay, what are actually in my meals when I eat them? Am I, am I getting full? Am I getting nutrients? Am, am I going down to these things? And like, the list can go on and on and on, but go from big to small. Go from calories, protein, carbs, fats, meal timing, what is, what is in the meals, meal composition, like go through all those things, but start up high and go down low. And again, like if you need to seek out to somebody to help you with this, seek out to somebody to help this or read or do things. And I love this, like, well, I don't have money for a coach. I don't have this. That's great. I, you can still go on Google and read. Like, everything that you need to know is on Google. Like, so don't use that excuse for yourself that you don't have money or you don't have time or you don't have this and you have that. I, it, if you want to get it done, it will get done. It's just a matter of if you actually want to get it done. So that's as far as nutrition, big to small. And if you want to go exercising, you can go to how many days a week are you working out? If you're only working out one to two, you could try to work out three to four. Okay, what are you doing in those sessions? Are they all cardio or are they strength training? Okay, add some strength training in, into those sessions. Add 
three days of strength training into those sessions. You should be doing at the very least two days of, of strength training, if not more like three to four, that's kind of the sweet spot. So like you can go to how many days a week are you working out and you can go to what are your sessions being composed of. Now, once you, once you know what, okay, I'm strength training, let's talk about volume. And volume is just like how many sets and reps you do, right? How many sets, reps of a certain weight you do. So if you wanna build bigger glutes, you can do more volume for your glute area. If you wanna build bigger arms, you can, you can have more volume to, to the arm area, whatever the case may be. But you go through, again, the list of big to small, big to small. And then you get down to like, after you do, go through all those three things, then you get down to like, okay, what are my exercises? What, what am I doing in the exercises? Am I changing my exercises? Like those things start to come into play. What's my rest time? How many reps? Like those kind of things come into play. But one quick thing on that, it's totally not related to this, but you don't need a ton of variability in your workouts for the love of God. Like I know, I know classes are a big thing right now, but like I, I swear to you, if you just pick eight movements and just perfect them month after month after month and you try to get stronger, you try to perfect your form, you try to learn the form, you try to just continuously progress those movements, I, you, you're gonna see so much better results than if you were just in a class fucking doing you know, Zumba. And there's nothing wrong with Zumba, that's amazing. Like, I, that's a great way to get working out and it's a great way to have cardio and totally all for you. But like, if you're talking about strength training in particular, you need to just like, Find movement patterns, squat, deadlift, row, overhead press. You don't need a ton of variability. You, you don't need so many things going in there at once. And just stick to what, what kind of you know and, and keep moving with those movements. Keep progressing. I swear you'll, you'll have better results with that. So that's one just kind of off topic thing. But the last thing I want to talk about is, and this is very, very important. It's just, and it's obviously kind of like corny, but just don't give up. And I say this because I've gone through this already, and I'm sure a lot of people have, but like my hip, ha I mean, I've had some serious issues with my hip and my low back area, and it, it's been going on for, shit, almost 10 years now, 23, 10 years now, yeah, it's been going on for 10 years, and in the beginning, I was just like, I, I didn't seek out help, I was like, ah, it'll be fine, fuck it, kept getting worse, I was like, all right, well, I'm still not seeking out help because, you know, I, I should know, I'll, I'll, I'll research, I'll read up, I'll do this, I'll do X, Y, and Z, so I never sought out help, just kept getting worse, I just kept living with it, it is what it is. And the longer it got, the more I was like, okay, I have to do something about this. I went to the extreme of having a surgery. Like they cut open my body, shaved my femur down. And like, I went to an extreme of doing that all like, and even with that, it didn't fix the problem. It, it, it didn't fix the issue that was really at hand. And now after, you know, 10 years of reading, researching, doing mobility, doing stretches, doing strengthening, doing whatever it is. I've reached out to somebody recently. Her name is Jenna Syracuse. If you're in, in, in the Northern Virginia area, she's amazing. But I reached out to her. We got working. Like, I got some help there. And just, like, just continuously trying to reach out to more people, read more things, research more things, and just trying to learn more the entire time. I, 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 during this process, trust me, and I've thought about this, like, there was a lot of times where I could have said, you know, fuck this. I'm not, I'm not working out legs anymore. I'm not working out at all anymore. The pain is too much. My back hurts too bad. My hip hurts too bad. It's inflamed. Like there's days I couldn't, I, I can't bend over to brush my teeth because like my, I have to hold the sink because my back hurts so bad. Like the, a lot of these times I could have been like, well, I, screw this. I just won't, I won't deadlift anymore. I won't squat anymore. I, I won't do these things anymore. But Every time I did, I was like, well, am I going to be proud of that when I'm 90 years old, if I get to, if I get to 90 years old in a wheelchair? Um, am I going to be proud of the fact that I just gave up and said, well, this is really hard. This is really frustrating. This is really difficult. Well, you know what? I, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'll, I'll just find a different way. Or am I going to say, okay, you know what? I was proud that I kept trying. I kept trying to learn. I, I kept trying to do all the things I possibly could to, to get through it and get to my goal. And and on top of that, what came was I learned a lot about mobility. I learned a lot about strength. I learned, I learned a lot about the hip, the low back area, like, and all that information I can now use to help my clients. So just knowing that, and that's my little story, but like just knowing all those things that came from that hardship, that hard time, I'm a firm believer that adversity is the foundation of success, right? And if you have some kind of adversity, you're not losing weight, you're not getting stronger, like whatever the case may be it will make you into a better person. It will make you ha to have more success because you have to go through these things. You have to go through the nights of the, the mornings of not being able to brush my teeth because my back hurts so bad, not being able to get out of bed, like barely being able to do my job. Like it, you have to go through all these things to get to where you want to be. And, and my thing is just 
don't let it stop you. Like, I know it can be frustrating. I know it's, I know it's hard. I, I understand it's, it's emotional and it's like, it's difficult, it, but losing fat is difficult. You know, getting stronger is difficult. Build, being healthy for the rest of your life is difficult, but like, that's why you see the obesity rate is so high. That's why you see people are, you know, lazy and out of shape and X, Y, and Z because it's easier to take that route to say, well, you know what? I'm not seeking out help. I'm not going to actually track my calories. I'm not going to make adjustments and I'm just going to give up. That's a lot easier most of the time than saying like, okay, I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to find out what's going on. I'm going to be open-minded. I'm going to try new things. I'm going to take this challenge on as opposed to saying, I'm just going to give up. So that would be kind of my, my roadmap, my checklist for you guys who aren't maybe seeing the progress you want to see, but you do want to see the progress and, and you're, you're open to trying new things. You're open to seeking out help. You're open to being critical of yourself and being honest with yourself and, and, not, and not digging your heels in the ground and saying, I'm doing everything I possibly can. There's always something more you, that, that can be done. So that is my checklist. That's my roadmap. I hope it helped you guys. Again, going back to number one, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have this, if you want to hop on a call, like I will do whatever I can to possibly help you, right? So please, please just know that. Feel free to reach out to me, DM me, email me, Whatever the case may be, I'd be more than happy to help you guys. So I hope this helped you guys. Take it into action, and I guarantee you'll start seeing results. We'll talk soon.